science practice test. These sample test questions are for the TEAS exam. You'll be given some time to answer each question. If you need more time, just pause the video. You can see hundreds of more free test questions at www.testguide.com slash TEAS. Let's get started. Question one. Two elements have similar chemical properties, physical properties and number of valence electrons. On the periodic table, where would these two elements be located? In the same row? In the same period? In the same family? In the same orbital? Correct answer is C. Elements with similar chemical and physical properties are located in the same column on the periodic table. Columns on the periodic table are called families or groups. The rows of a periodic table cut across different families, and no general statement can be made about the similarities of elements within a row. A row is also called a period. Elements with similar characteristics would have similar valence shells, the outermost orbital, or outer electrons, but may not have the exact same inner orbital shells. Question 2. Which of the following is the appropriate term to describe water evaporating from a heated pot? Vaporization, condensation, evaporation, sublimation. The correct answer is A. Though evaporation and vaporization describe the same general process of a liquid turning into a gas, the process by which this occurs is different. Vaporization is the process of a liquid turning into a gas when heat is applied, as in the question. However, evaporation is the natural process of a liquid turning into a gas without a direct heat source. Condensation is the reverse process where a gas is cooled and turns into a liquid. Sublimation is not related to this question as this is the process by which a solid turns into a gas without turning into a liquid first. Question 3. Which of the following is the correct order of the scientific method? Conclusion, analysis, data collection, identify the problem, hypothesis formation. The correct answer is D. Research is done first to identify a problem of interest to be studied. Assuming an experiment can be designed and conducted, a hypothesis is formed. A hypothesis is a testable question and can be only be proven or disproven using data and analysis of some kind. Data collection can be done using qualitative or quantitative methods depending on the nature of the outcomes being measured. The analysis and conclusion are the final steps respectively. In some cases, the conclusion may be that more data is needed or an additional experiment must be conducted. Question four. Student A is performing an experiment to test the effect colored lights have on the rate of photosynthesis. Which of the following would be an appropriate hypothesis for this experiment? Blue light will increase and green light will decrease the rate of photosynthesis. Red light will decrease and blue light will increase the rate of photosynthesis. Colored light has no effect on the rate of photosynthesis or oxygen production. If more oxygen is produced in blue light, then blue light increases the rate of photosynthesis. Correct answer D. A well-written hypothesis is in the form of an if-then statement. In accordance with this, a hypothesis stating blue light will increase photosynthesis gives no indication how this hypothesis will be proven or disproven. A sound hypothesis will state the experimenter's testable assertion with information about how the hypothesis will be affirmed or rejected. Answer option D states the assertion blue light is the best light for photosynthesis and how this assertion will be proven if the rate of oxygen produced is highest. Question 5. Glucose is used in cellular respiration to produce energy for the animal cells. An animal cell needs to produce energy, therefore it will use glucose. What type of reasoning is used in this scientific statement? 
deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, logical reasoning, indirect reasoning. Correct answer A. The first sentence of this statement is a known fact and the second sentence applies the known fact to the current scenario, an animal cell needing energy. This is an example of deductive reasoning whereby a conclusion is drawn from a general principle. Inductive reasoning results from the formation of a conclusion based on observations that are not necessarily known facts. That is, it rained the last two Mondays. It is Monday today, therefore it will rain. Question six. An enzyme is subjected to various temperatures over a 24 hour period. The amount of substrate left in the test tube is monitored and recorded at the end of the 24 hour period. The results of the experiment are below. Which of the following conclusions can be drawn from the data? The enzyme is defective. The enzyme is non-functional at 55 degrees Celsius. The enzyme's optimal temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. Not enough information to determine optimal temperature. Correct answer, D. The data shows that at 35 degrees Celsius, more of the substrate is consumed, signaling an active rate of photosynthesis. The increments, however, in temperature are wide and the optimal temperature for the enzyme may not be modeled in the experiment. For example, the optimal temperature for the enzyme may actually be closer to 40 degrees Celsius. A follow-up experiment would need to be conducted using temperatures near the 35 degrees Celsius mark, but with smaller increments to isolate the exact optimal temperature. Question seven. In which of the following situations is a reasonable experiment unable to be designed? If a hypothesis cannot be formulated, if an outcome cannot be measured in any form, if the data collected will only be qualitative in nature, if the data collected will only be quantitative in nature. Correct answer B. An experiment is futile if there is no clear way to measure the data to draw a conclusion. A conclusion cannot be made without evidence of some kind, either quantitative or qualitative or both. In some cases, as is true for sociological studies, the data collected may only be qualitative, which is still appropriate to be able to draw a conclusion. The same is true for experiments that are heavy in quantitative evidence. Question eight. For an experiment to measure the volume of CO2 that can be exhaled by individuals of varying ages, which of the following would be the most appropriate unit of measurement? AMU, ATM, liters, grams. Correct answer C. Generally, data that deals with gas is measured in liters. Grams is indicative of measurements for solid compounds as they can be easily weighed. The atomic mass unit, AMU, is a unit smaller, similar to grams, but for small microscopic substances. The pressure unit, ATM, is ideal when measuring air pressure which in this case would not be entirely applicable as the experiment is examining the volume of air that can be expelled from one's lungs, not the pressure of the gas as it comes out of the lungs. Question nine. When studying the phenotypes of individuals in a large population, which of the following would be the best method of data collection? Observation, sampling, inference, experimentation. Correct answer B. Since the population is large in size, it would be difficult and most likely costly to account for everyone in the population. Instead, a sample would be preferred as long as the sampling is random and representative of the larger population. Biased samples cannot be used to draw scientific conclusions and are not an accurate form of data collection. Question 10. Mathematical models are needed to do which of the following? help produce data that cannot be collected, make quantitative data more like qualitative data, produce viable conclusions based on observations, establish relationships between variables in an experiment.
Correct answer D. Mathematical models are essential in drawing quantitative conclusions based on both quantitative and qualitative data. Mathematical models are also the underlying foundations of technology, without which would make everyday life more challenging. Mathematical models can help to disprove a hypothesis or confirm a hypothesis, and can also be used to infer further data outside of the collected data. Mathematical models can be used for predictive purposes as long as the parameters of the input data are well-defined. Question 11. A catalyst is able to speed up a chemical reaction by doing which of the following? Increase the transition state, lower the activation energy, decrease the thermal energy, increase the heat exchange. Correct answer B. A catalyst is able to speed up reactions by lowering the activation energy. This is the energy needed to start a reaction and for slow reactions is often very high. A catalyst does not change the reactants or the products of the chemical reaction, only the activation energy needed to start the reaction. By reducing the energy needed to start a reaction, the reaction can take place quicker. Question 12. Which of the following are specialized proteins that are able to perform catalytic functions? Lipids, catalase, enzymes, nucleases. Correct answer, C. Enzymes are specialized proteins that can serve as catalysts for a reaction by lowering the reaction's activation energy. Catalase is an enzyme specific to the breakdown of a peroxide. However, the question is asking for a general term to describe catalytic proteins, and catalase is a specific example of an enzyme. Lipids have no enzymatic activity, and nucleases are specialized compounds that can, be, that can break down nucleic acids in the cell. Question 13. A solution has a recorded pH of 7.11. Which of the following is the best categorization of this solution? Weak acid, neutral, weak base, strong base. Correct answer C. The pH scale is from 0 to 14. Acids are solutions with a pH less than 7. Neutral solutions have a pH of 7, and basic solutions have a pH greater than 7. The solution of, has a pH of 7.11, which makes it basic, but 7.11 is not far from 7, which is a neutral solution. Therefore, the solution would be a base, but a very weak base. Question 14. Hexane has which of the following types of chemical bonds? All single bonds, single and double bonds, single and triple bonds, double and triple bonds. Correct answer A. The suffix or ending of a hydrocarbon's name indicates the type of bonds that are present in the compound. An alkane has all single bonds. Alkenes have single and at least one double bond, and an alkyne has single bonds and at least one triple bond. As a note, the prefix of a hydrocarbon's name indicates the number of carbons present in the compound. That is, hexane has six carbons. Hex equals the prefix for six. 15. Water does not evaporate easily due to which of the following chemical properties? Polarity, hydrogen bonding, covalent bonding, ionic bonding. Correct answer B. Hydrogen bonding is a strong type of intermolecular force that prevents water molecules from evaporating. Water does evaporate when there's enough heat to break the hydrogen bonds. In comparison to other liquid compounds, water is not as volatile and does not evaporate very easily due to these strong bonds between water molecules. Water is an example of covalent bonding, bonding between nonmetal elements. However, this alone does not account for water's inability to eva evaporate easily. Question 16. Due to water's polarity, water is known as which of the following? A base, an acid, universal solute, universal solvent.
Correct answer, D. Water is said to be polar, which means that there are opposite charges plus and minus in the water molecule. This allows water to attract other polar and ionic compounds and pull the compounds apart, therefore dissolving them. A solvent is a compound that is able to dissolve other compounds. A solute is the compound that gets dissolved. Water is not dissolved, but instead water is the compound that dissolves other compounds. Therefore, water is a solvent. As a note, water is unable to dissolve oils and fats because these compounds are nonpolar and do not have charges that water can attract to and pull apart. Question 17. Gas particles are able to collide with each other as they move in random and rapid motion. Gas particles contain a high amount of which type of energy? Kinetic energy, potential energy, total energy, random energy. Correct answer A. Gas particles are in random, rapid motion because they have high amounts of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and this leads to gas particles' ability to sustain rapid movement. Conversely, a solid would have the lowest amount of kinetic energy of all the states of matter, but would have more potential energy. Energy is stored in chemical bonds, and a solid has chemical bonds that are strong, keeping it a solid, whereas a gas has no bonds and no stored energy. The total energy of any state of matter is constant. What varies is the amount of potential and kinetic energy present. So if the kinetic energy is high in a state of matter, then the potential energy must be low and vice versa. Question 18. An element that has 10 protons and 11 electrons would have which of the following charges? Plus 1, 0, negative 1, plus 1, and negative 1. Correct answer C. Protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. 10 of the protons would be able to cancel or neutralize 10 of the electrons. However, this would leave one more electron, therefore making the charge of the element negative 1. In a neutral atom, the number of protons and electrons would be equal to each other. Question 19. What subatomic particles is or are located within the nucleus of an atom? Protons only, neutrons only, protons and electrons, neutrons and protons. Correct answer D. The three subatomic particles of an atom are protons, neutrons, and electrons. The nucleus of an atom contains the weight of the atom and is made up of both protons and neutrons. Electrons orbit around the nucleus in orbitals or in the electron cloud. Question 20. When calcium, a metal, and oxygen, a nonmetal, form magnesium oxide, how is the chemical bond between the elements formed? By the transfer of protons, by a transfer of electrons, by the equal sharing of electrons, by the unequal sharing of electrons. Correct answer B. A metal and a nonmetal form an ionic compound. An ionic compound is characterized by a complete transfer of electrons. The metal releases its electrons and the nonmetal receives the electrons. Protons are never exchanged or affected when two elements combine. The sharing of electrons, whether equally or unequally, is true for covalent bonds between nonmetals. Please go to www.testguide.com/tees for hundreds of more free practice test questions.